Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day. Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross. Alleluia. Suffer to Welcome to our Easter Sunday Mass here at Our Lady of Lourdes in Massapequa Park. Let's pray and celebrate today as we always do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To better celebrate Mass, as always, we look into our hearts, we confess our sins, and we joyfully accept God's mercy. For the times we have failed to realize we are an Easter people who should be filled always with the spirit of resurrection, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the times our faith has been weak and we've given in to doubt, Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. For the good we mean to do but don't do, for the unrealized good intentions we have, the sins of omission, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that the risen Christ will raise us up and renew us in our daily lives. God our Father, by raising Christ your Son, you conquered the power of death, and you open for us the way that leads to eternal and everlasting life. Let our Easter celebration today raise us up and renew our lives by the Spirit that is within us. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. 
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hands of the Lord have struck with power. The right hands of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord, this has been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians, to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb the sheep redeems, Christ who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life, who died, reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw wayfaring. The tomb of Christ, who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection, bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ my hope is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, Victor King, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Lord, be in my heart and on my lips that I might worthily proclaim your gospel through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scriptures that he had to rise from the dead. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, from all of us at Our Lady of Lords, I want to begin by wishing you a happy Easter, a happy, healthy, holy, and safe Easter Sunday. 
You know, I'll have uh, many intentions during this Mass, and that's not uncommon for many priests. There are so many special intentions in our hearts, especially in these challenging days. Obviously, all those people who are first responders on the front line battling this coronavirus, praying for families who are trying to support, sometimes at a distance, members of their families who are ill, praying, of course, for those who have been uh, afflicted with this terrible virus, and for our country and our world, that this scourge will leave us quickly and we can get back to the life that we once knew, maybe more deeply sensitive to the beauty and the sanctity and the value of each life as we've gone through this challenging time. Uh, I'll have many intentions. One of my specific intentions today is for a classmate of mine from high school. His name was Rod Hess, Gerard Hess. He was a sensational ball player, baseball player back then, and a really bright guy, almost a closet intellectual. And we'd spend lots of time talking about specifically the writings of Herman Hess, books like Narcissus and Goldman. He was very, very bright, and uh, sometimes you could be misled by his athletic prowess into not knowing that it was a great mind, a great heart, and a great soul. My friend Rod didn't have an easy time of it in life. He battled so much, especially depression, as well as addictions of all kinds, which are another scourge around our country and the world, the problems of addiction. He got through all that, and he got through all that, I think, a lot because of the program, but also because of his faith. And whenever I'd see him, it would be because he was on his way to Mass. And after all that battling and all that coming out on top with the grace and goodness of God, uh, the Corona-19 virus took him away this past week. So I dedicate, among many, many other people, this Mass to Rod Gerard Harris Hess, a great guy, a wonderful man, a classmate and a friend who we will all miss. We give thanks to the Lord for his life and are sad at his passing and hope that he has now achieved the kingdom of heaven, which he worked so mightily to enter. I also want to say once again, I've gotten letters and emails throughout the week from so many of you who are doctors and nurses and on the front line. Uh, and again, we celebrate you. We thank you for your great courage. One terrific nurse, Patty Contino, said to me in a note, you know, every time we go into the hospital, we're scared, we're frightened. It's not like we're these heroic people who go in easily. We are terrified of going to work. But she said, the gift of faith sustains us knowing that we're not alone, that we've got the Lord at our side, that he carries us in those times in our lives when we cannot carry ourselves. That's the God we celebrate today on Easter Sunday. Let me talk to you a little bit about a personal thing. Uh, some of you who know me know that I'm blessed to have a 99-year-old mother who's still in my life. And the most nights of the week, I get to uh, put her to bed, get her out of the wheelchair, seat her on the edge of her hospital bed, and uh, we sit together, we talk, we pray, and we do something unusual, we sing together. We're a little duet team. And you might think, especially in light of the fact that it's kind of our good night prayer time, we'd sing religious songs, but we actually don't. Very often we sing secular songs because we find in them so often a message that is holy, surprisingly so. One of the songs we sing in particular was written by Irving Berlin, good Jewish songwriter that he was, um, and it's called uh, Always. And it goes like this. I'll be loving you always with a love that's true always when the things you plan need a helping hand i will understand always always days may not be fair always that's when i'll be there always not for just an hour not for just a day not for just a year but always now imagine this 99 year old mom and me singing that together every night and we see it as a religious and spiritual experience because for us it defines the love of god there for us always no matter what loving us unconditionally and easter sunday to me is the fulfillment of the promise of that love not going to love us always not always sometimes but forever this is a god who's with us every step of the way and how does he love us you know i talk about always god's with us and his love is with us always but let's be more specific how does god love us in a way that nobody else loves us all of us if we're honest we have terrible fears a lot of us locked away in our hearts and souls um, of so many different things 
Uh, surveys indicate, interestingly enough, that one of the great fears people have is public speaking, but far more frightening than public speaking. Universally, people have a great, great fear of death because we know that it's some kind of end and we're not quite sure what comes afterwards. It's interesting, very often at funerals, I'll say that we talk about the person who's died as if they die, but we're not going to. I ask my people sometimes in the parish, how many of you have made a will? And half of the time people haven't because somehow or another they've figured out a way to escape death. Death is really a scary and frightening thing. And you and I are living in a time when death has become more real for us than ever. The reality that neighbors and friends, young and old, are getting sick and in many cases dying by the thousands from this mysterious and out of the blue disease. So we're frightened. We're frightened especially of death. But do you realize that today, Easter Sunday, when Jesus conquers death, when he shows us for sure that there's life beyond this life, when he opens up for us the possibility of a heavenly life, he grapples with, he wrestles with, and then he destroys the greatest fear you and I have. We all have so many fears and those fears paralyze us. I don't know if you've had a chance to watch that TV program, The Crown, but. There's a beautiful and very poignant chapter where Elizabeth is challenged by the fact that uh, there's been a terrible tragedy in Wales. Children have died by the score. And her advisors say, when you go, go and be sympathetic. Don't be afraid to cry, to show that you share the pain of those people. And she says, there's something wrong with me. I feel it, but I, I can't. I can't cry in public. That's Elizabeth the Queen's fear, expressing her emotions, because maybe if I start to cry, I'll never stop. We all have fears, but here's the thing. If the greatest fear of all, the fear of death, is conquered by Jesus who says, death is no more, do you realize the impact it should have on you and me beyond today? See, because if the worst fear takes an exit, it means we can be rid finally of all the fears that keep us from becoming the people God wants us to be. You know, we want to love others, we want to express our love, but what if I express love and I don't get it back? I'm afraid. Well, we don't need to be afraid anymore. I want to be generous, but what if I'm generous and later on I don't have money for me? And that el elimination of fear helps us to come to a point where we say, God will provide. Let me be generous now and not worry about the future. We have fears of trusting people again when they betrayed us or let us down or hurt us. And yet Jesus, who on the cross says, Father, forgive them, is the model for us of letting go being willing to forgive. It doesn't matter whether or not other people are going to betray us again or let us down and not be all that they should be. At least we can say, Lord, you wanted me to forgive. You wanted me to trust again. You wanted me to be generous. You wanted me to love freely. And when you destroyed my fear of death, Lord, you opened up the possibility that no fear will ever have power over me again. I don't need to be afraid because you have conquered fear. You have conquered death. Today is, if you will, our spiritual emancipation proclamation day. We are finally free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, free at last, because the greatest fear, the one that paralyzes us the most, the one that keeps us from being the fully, actual, realized people we're supposed to be, that unknown thing called death, is no longer unknown. It's been conquered by our Lord on Easter Sunday, and with that comes the freedom of children of God to know that with God, all things are possible. I began uh, with a song. I'm gonna end this homily with a song. Some years ago, you know, there was a terrible, terrible shooting in Orlando, Florida. Many people were killed in a nightclub by a, a man filled with hate. Uh, the Broadway community decided to come together as a response to that hatred and that violence and to sing a song by Burt Bacharach and Hal David, one that you know for many years, what the world needs now is love. The Broadway community sings it, and I thought, what better way to celebrate Easter on the celebration of our God of love, who loves us enough, loves us unconditionally, to free us from our greatest fears and to help us to become all that we're supposed to be, God who is love, and who manifests that love more fully on Easter Sunday than any other day, that we should celebrate the gift of love and become instruments of his love. So if you would take a moment now to sit back and listen to the Broadway community singing for all of us, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. And if you and I can at the end of this mass go out into a world and bring our love, fully realize without fear that we become one with the God who says, you have no need to fear, be at peace, 
until the end of time, I am with you. I have conquered death. Fear no more. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little love. But the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just the sun. But for everyone, no, we don't need another mountain. There are mountains and hillsides enough to climb. There are oceans and rivers enough to cross, enough to last, enough to last till the end of time. Easter Sunday is the perfect opportunity to renew our own baptismal vows made for us a while ago, and now we choose once again to follow this great Lord and Jesus Christ, the conqueror of death. Dear friends, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to a newness of life. Now that we have completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises that we made in baptism when we rejected Satan and his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. And so I'm going to ask you these questions, and from wherever you're watching this Mass, if you could respond with a loud and clear, I do. It's a wonderful way to renew our faith. My friends, do you reject sin as to live in the freedom of God's children? I, I do. do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I, I do. do. Do you reject Satan, father of, print, father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I do. 
You believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. You believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of all our sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. I do. God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit. He's forgiven all our sins. May he also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus now and forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. With confidence in the goodness of God, we now turn to the Lord with our prayers and petition, knowing that in his time and in his way, the Lord always hears us and responds. The response, Lord, hear our prayer. That all church leaders will be renewed in their mission of leading all people to Jesus, the risen Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper unity among all Christians as they acknowledge together and proclaim to the world the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the risen Christ may bless, guide, and protect all who serve in public office, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Anthony Antonellis, Conrad Smith, Marion and George Jelnick, Anthony Preziosi, Michael Goff, Peter F. Kearns III, Anne-Marie Tenay. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially May Donnelly, Joan Ferraro, John Marr, Patrick Campbell. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, John Brosnan, Sr., the St. Joseph Book of Remembrance, Francisco and Eugenia Delgado, Paul Struzzieri, Nettie Marola, deceased members of the Polini and Ricciotti families, Egbert C. Carpenter, whom we remember at this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like us, of course, to pray in a special way for all first responders, all those on the front line, not just obviously doctors and nurses and EMTs and police officers and firefighters, but uh, those who are working in funeral homes, uh, those who are selling us our groceries and drug supplies and being there for us in our time of need. All those wonderful and generous people who put themselves on the line for their special protection and for an appreciation for all they do. I'd like to pray too, of course, once again for my friend Rod Hess and all those who have passed from life to death, but now to eternal life, that they might know the happiness of heaven. And I'm going to ask you to join me now as our closing prayer for this part of the Mass as we entrust all these petitions to the Mother of God. We say so often, to Jesus through Mary, what better way to go to our Lord than through the mother he loves so deeply? Join me as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. For special occasions like Easter Sunday, I use the chalice it was given to me when I was ordained by my mom and dad, Cecilia and Nicholas Lasanti. My dad, I pray, is in heaven. My mom, as I mentioned, is, is with me still. And it's an uh, interesting chalice in that it uh, has on it all the apostles at the Last Supper with Jesus. 
And it's important to remember that they were all invited, even Judas, his betrayer, is invited to the Last Supper because our Lord closes his heart to no one. Every one of us is always in his love and his mercy. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands, to the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Lord, with Easter joy, we offer you the sacrifice by which your church is reborn and nourished, and we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we dwell always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. You never cease to call us to a new and more abundant life. God of love and mercy, you're always ready to forgive. We know we are sinners, and yet you invite us to trust in your mercy. Time and time again, we broke your covenant, but you never abandoned us. Instead, through your Son, Jesus our Lord, you bind yourself ever more closely to the human family by a bond that can never be broken. Now, on Easter Sunday, we celebrate, we turn back to you. We are renewed by Christ your Son, who died and rose for us. And so, in wonder and with gratitude, we join our voices with the choirs of heaven to proclaim the power of your love and to sing of our salvation in Christ. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I'm going to use the first Eucharistic prayer for reconciliation, that our whole world with all its problems and divisions and pains and sorrows might be united behind and with Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus, the Savior of the world, our Redeemer, especially in times of trial. Father, from the beginning of time, you have always done what is good for us, so that we might be holy as you are holy. Look with kindness on your people gathered here today before you, and send forth the power of your Spirit, so that these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we have become your sons and your daughters. When we were lost and could not find our way to you, you loved us more than ever. Jesus, your Son, innocent and without sin, gave himself into our hands and was nailed to a cross. And yet before he stretched out his arms between heaven and earth, in an everlasting sign of your loving covenant, he desired to celebrate the Paschal Feast in the company of his friends and disciples. And so, while they were at supper, Jesus took bread. He blessed the bread and broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory 
of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We do all of this in memory of Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our lasting peace. We celebrate his death and his resurrection, and we look forward to the coming of that day when he will return to give us all the fullness of joy. Therefore, we offer you, God, ever faithful and true, this sacrifice which restores us to your friendship. Father, look with love on those who have called to share in the one sacrifice of Christ, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us all into one body and heal us of every division. Keep us always in communion of mind and heart with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until at last we stand in your presence to share in the lives of the saints in communion with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, St. Joseph, her devoted spouse, and in communion too with all of our dearly departed brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, all those people we have loved and lost, what better time to remember them? Let's commend them now to God's tender mercy. And then freed from every shadow of death, we shall take our place in the new creation, and we shall give you thanks with and through Jesus Christ, who is our risen and our loving Lord. For it is through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory, all power is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For the healing of our whole world, especially in this time of challenge, we turn to our God and we pray in the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. Amen. I know that physically you can't be here in church with me today to receive communion, but we can pray together to be spiritually united with the Eucharist. On your screen now is a special prayer, an act of spiritual communion. I'll ask you to pray with me now. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
You know, at these weekend messes, we've been trying to mention a few announcements. The only announcement would be to continue to be safe, to be careful. If you're healthy, thank God for that, but also be aware of those around you who are not. Help where you can. A check on that neighbor who's alone. When you know people are sick and they've been afflicted by the virus, reach out to them by phone or email or just pray for them, but don't let them go through this alone. So many folks are in our hospitals, pray for those who are sick, but also remember in prayer those who are working with the sick and are making sure that none of them ever have to be alone because there are people who care. This past week, a number of friends were in touch and said, what can I do? And in some cases, all they did, but it's a big thing, was they brought food to families uh, that are on quarantine, that can't go out. Uh, leaving food on their doorstep just so that they be fed. In physical, emotional, and spiritual ways, this is the time, the time of challenge for us to be there to make a difference for the people who are in need. And there are literally thousands and thousands of people around us who are in need. This is the time to embrace the challenge, the vocation of Christian living, and to do what we can for one another. Sometimes all we do is listen, but listening can be a great gift. And I said last week, but I'll say again, when you go to confession someday, when we're back to face-to-face -face confession, please don't have to confess that you were a hoarder who took more than you should. Take what you need, but leave the rest for others so that others may be served in their need. Just do what you can and of course continue spiritually, emotionally, financially to support your church because we're still here and we still need you. Let's pray. Father of love, watch over your church and bring us to the glory of the resurrection, that great promise of this Easter sacrament. And we ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Lord. I'm gonna ask you wherever you want to bow your heads for this special Easter blessing. And at the end of each blessing, if you could respond loudly and clear with the affirmation, amen. May Almighty God bless you on this solemn feast of Easter and may he protect you against every evil. Amen. amen. Through the resurrection of his son, God has granted us healing. May he fulfill his promises and bless you with eternal life. Amen. Amen. You have mourned with Christ in his suffering. Now we celebrate the joy of his resurrection. May we come with joy to the feast which Jesus has forever promised to share with us. Amen. Amen. And my friends, may Almighty God bless you and your families in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Amen. Alleluia.